Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Uh, I am here to talk about C Sharp, but a new thing in C Sharp, a particular, not just like language features, but a new way of running C Sharp. So not that long ago, if you were teaching someone C Sharp, think about a new user. Put yourself back when you were new to C Sharp. And your first application might look something like this. You would have gone to the command line, type .NET, new console, and then told them to open VS Code, or maybe you did, and then you're presented with this. And it's like, okay, I'm new to C Sharp. I don't know anything about this language. And then I'm like, okay, what does this mean? And what is a namespace? And why do I need a class thing? And what, is that the name of the class? Or is that the keyword? I don't really know. And then as I don't know what that is. Like, that's just a whole bunch of words I've never heard before I don't use in common language, like static and void. What does void mean? I have no idea. And then finally, this looks like something that you might want to do as a first-time developer, you know, print hello world to the console or to the command line. So the code itself, there's a lot going on here that isn't actually the code that you want to introduce people to when they're first starting C Sharp. Now, there are other files in here as well. Like, what's this csproj file? Oh my god, it's XML. Like, why do I have XML in my new language experience that I am trying to teach you in this modern stack that's called C Sharp? And then lastly, there are these other folders that I'm not really sure what they exist for, but they look kind of menacing. If I open them, they have other things I've never heard of inside of them as well. So we can do better than this. Like we wanted to make sure that we can simplify this experience for new uh, uh, people learning C Sharp for the first time. So in about .NET 6, we started making some changes. And so now your new console app looks a bit like this. So I still have a bunch of files. I still have a file called program.cs, even though my app is called myfirstapp.csproj. So I'm not really sure why, what program is and why it exists. But at least my program.cs is now just this one file that I want to show you as the first time C Sharp developer. Look, open this file, type console.writeline, hello world, and then you can run your application. And obviously, I still have this nasty looking XML as well. So what's really left here? What if we could just get rid of all this stuff that isn't C Sharp? for the person who is starting out. I'm starting from nothing, and my first notch into learning C Sharp should just be C Sharp, right? It shouldn't be anything else. So if I go over to the console, I'm going to open up a new instance of code. And so this is where I want to start, a nice blank slate. And I'm just going to add my first C Sharp file. So I'm going to call it hello.cs, because I'm learning. And so I'm going to yeah. print hello. It's the first thing we do in new applications. And so then I can tell the person, yeah, you're going to write console dot right line, hello C sharp. Great. I've got C sharp. I'm just being exposed to C sharp. I only have to learn about the concepts that I need to accomplish the tasks that I'm trying to do right now as a first time user. I have to call this right line method uh, on this thing that says it's going to write to the console. So now I want to run this. So OK, I'll come back to my terminal. Uh, let's go into this folder that I created. We'll clear it out, have a look inside. So here it is. So now, what if I could just .NET run that file directly? Now, this is the first time. This is a brand new feel. Look at that. It works. Like, oh, hello, C Sharp. That's kind of cool, right? Now, I know some of you are looking at that and going, why did it take 3.6 seconds? We're working on performance. This is literally the first version of this that works. .NET 10 Preview 4 has this capability inside of it. OK, and the version of VS Code I'm using, the C Sharp extension that lights up the IntelliSense when you're running in this mode, will be available imminently. If not by the end of the day, then hopefully by tomorrow. OK, so now I can just directly run C Sharp. If I run it again, it should be a bit quicker because things should be a bit warmer. It's under a second now. That's fantastic. All right, well, what else can I do? Well, I might want to extend this to do more than just, you know, write, C, uh, write out something to the, to the console. What if I wanted to print out I don't know, how long has it been since build started? So we started, what, it was date time, offset dot, oh, we'll do dot pars, and we started on what day? Did anyone know the date? It was like 2025, obviously. We're in May, and I think it was the 18th, is that right? 19, 19, okay, apparently some, I started on Sunday, I don't know about y'all, but that's what we did. All right, so uh, since, again, was going to be, uh, yeah, that's right, thank you very much, Copilot. And then instead of printing that out, we're going to go, okay, you know, it has been, I mean, that's not bad, but I'm just going to be lazy and I'm just going to do this, right? I'm just, it is, it is uh, been that since build started. Okay, so I could go ahead and run that now. So if I go and run that, see if I've made any mistakes. And, you know, it is factually or technically correct, which I'm told is the best kind of correct. 
but it's not exactly very human friendly. So I know that there's a package I could use to make this nicer. So how do I reference a package in this kind of new mode that I'm in with the file? Well, I can introduce or use something called an ignored directive. So in the new version of C Sharp, we taught C Sharp as a language. You've all seen like hash before, like hash if in your C Sharp or like maybe some other types of hashes in there. Well, we taught, we taught it about hash colon, and that means ignore this. As a language, I don't want you to think about anything that happens after here, and that's good for us as experienced developers. We can build stuff on top of this now. So I can say, I want a package, and I know there's a package called humanizer, and I want to get it at version 2. Dot, I can't remember. It's 2. Dot something, so I'm just going to say 2. Dot start. All right? And now, instead of doing that, I can say dot .humanize, and I'm going to do it this way. So now let me go and run this. Now it's doing the restore in the background for me. I don't see any of that. Oh, and I've got a, I forgot to add a using. Okay, so let me add my using. That's a new thing I need to think about as a C-sharp developer after I've added this package. So good, good. Progressive disclosure, I'm learning the things I need to do. Okay, so now it has been two days since build started. So now I've seen I can have a, just a straight CS file. I can reference a package if I need to, and I can run that CS file directly. All right. So what else can we do? This seems like a pretty good start. I'm going to jump over into Ubuntu on WSL. OK, anyone use WSL? Yeah, WSL rocks, right? WSL is incredible. It's one of the best things uh, that we've done in a long time. And I believe it got open source this week, which is like super, super cool. OK, so I've got a couple of files here. I've got a hello and I've got since. So if I look inside this uh, hello file, all right, it's just a more advanced version of what I just showed you. It says, hello, it's been this long since build started. But look at this first line up here. See this line here? That's called a shebang. Anyone ever seen a shebang? I see someone applauding silently over here, but like they are applauding. I see you, sir. I see you. All right. So what does that mean? Well, in on Linux distros, in uh, these types of shells, you can put a hash bang at the front of your file, as long as it's the first line, and you remember not to use carriage return line feeds, and you remember not to have a bomb in your file, and all the other things that come with Windows when you pull this, your files over to Linux, um, you can point at what you want to use to execute this file directly. So as long as this file is marked as executable, which is a Linux thing, not so much a Windows thing, you can see up here the little X next to hello.cs, that means this file is executable. I can just say, hey, look at that. I can just run my CS file directly. So what's in this other one? Just to underline that one, this is my more generic version of this app, so I can like pass an argument in, and then it will calculate. So you can see now I'm using args, new concept. I can introduce that now, rather than having it be there in the beginning of the file that I have to like, they ignore that part, I'll get to that later. So how do I make this thing executable? Well, I have to make it executable. So I say shmod, shmod, do you say shmod? Chamad, chamad, and I say plus executable bit since.cs. Now, in theory, I can just execute. Oh, it says I need to provide a date. Good. So I'll put my birthday in. Probably a bad idea, but you know. Oh, not, not 1780. <laughs> I am a vampire. I just didn't tell any of you. And this will tell me how old I am. Yes, I am actually 47 years old. So this is, we think, a kind of cool thing. We now, if you're living in the Linux ecosystem, we support these types of you know, shell execute uh, constructs so that you can get the advantage of that on the system that you're using. All right, so what else can you kind of do with this? Well, first of all, let me just quickly compare. Like One of the reasons, like I kind of get making things simpler for new users. It's not just about that. Who here has ever written a Node application or a Python application? OK, this isn't new, right? If I'm over in Node land and I've got this uh, hello.js file, but if I actually, I keep typing CS when I mean to type JS, right? How do you run this over in node land? You do node hello.js, like that's how it works. How does it work in Python? You say pi or Python or Python 3 or whatever launcher you're using, and then the Python file. Even Go has a facility for this. Even Rust has a facility for doing this type of just run the file directly. So we were kind of lagging behind, but I'm very happy to say that we're catching up in .NET 10. OK, what about more complicated applications? Let me uh, move over now to something that isn't just hello. What if I want to do a web application? What other type of things would we have to support to let you build a web application? Well, here's a web API expressed as a single file with no project. So I've got my hash bang. This does nothing on Windows, all right? Maybe one day, 
but not today. So I can set the SDK. So web projects use a different SDK. Okay, an SDK is like a collection of packages and MS build, goop, and a whole bunch of magic. So you say, okay, I need to use the web SDK. I can add a reference to a package just like I showed, and then I can just write out my web application as you see here. So let me see if this actually runs, see if I'm lying. Uh, I'm in here, I'm gonna go into web API. Let's do .NET run webapi.cs, and I've done everything correctly. I didn't break it earlier. This should boot up my web API listening on, there it is, on localhost 5000. I can control click on that and there's my web application running on the defaults. Nice, nice. Okay, okay, well, that's a, that's a really good start, I think, you know, we're, we're getting somewhere here. What else can we possibly do uh, here to show you some other stuff? I'm gonna quickly jump back to my, where is it? Here it is, nope, that one, all right. Wanna make sure I show all the stuff that I wanted to show. Yeah, all right, so let's show some stuff that I wasn't planning on showing, because why not? So I'm gonna go back to this web API. So I showed you a web API, what about a Razor app? So what would a Razor app look like in this world? So this is a uh, Blazor server-side or Blazor static server-side rendering app over here. I've got a Razor app folder, and I've got my Razor app.cs file. What does it look like? Well, it looks like a web application. It doesn't really look that different. I'm bringing the, the web SDK, but because it's a web app, I can just have Razor files next to my entry point file. We call this the entry point file. Like you say, .NET run this file. That's your entry point file. This will just work. So if you want to continue teaching this person more about what they can do with C Sharp, you can do that before you introduce them to projects. But at some point, you're going to want a project, probably, for a lot of the stuff that you do. We all, a lot of us, I'm assuming, work in Visual Studio or we work with solutions with lots of projects that reference each other you get to a point where you need the flexibility, you need the capabilities that projects afford. But we don't leave you in the lurch. We haven't like, built an alternate universe where once you get to this point, you go, well, you're gonna have to walk back a few steps now and then I'm gonna have to teach you about projects. No, you can just jump straight into the world of projects. So let's go over to my app. So I'm in my new hope folder where I created my hello.cs and when I am ready, good and ready to move to projects, I can say .NET project convert, hello.cs. And now, just like that, if I look inside, I don't have a hello.cs file anymore, I have a hello folder. And if I open that folder, you'll see that now I have a project. So it took my package reference and it expanded it out into what it should be inside a project, which is a package reference uh, item. And if I go into my hello.cs file, there's my hello.cs file, it's stripped out those ignore directives because now I'm in project mode. I use the project way of doing things, which is referencing things via packages. But now it works the same way you would expect today. So now you can teach the person, all right, now that you're in project land, open for your, wait for your terminal, and then you just run the project in the folder, it finds the project, it builds it, and it runs it, okay? So now we have this nice, smooth, gradual learning arc where you can start from a single CS file, do your console.hello, console.writeline hello.cs, you can add packages, reference those, use those APIs in there. You can even build web applications. If you're in the world of Linux, you can take advantage of shell execution over there with Hashbang. And then when you're ready, you can introduce them to projects by converting what the work they've done already into a project so that they can now party in the world of projects and solutions uh, with the big kids using Visual Studio and solutions and all that fun. All right, so that's all I had to show you today. What I want you all to do is if you haven't already, go down and dot uh, go and download .NET 10 Preview 4. Visual Studio Code, the C-sharp extension for Visual Studio Code, that's this over here. I'm using a build from like the GitHub repo yesterday. I'm told this will be released in the pre-release channel for C-sharp extension, either like the end of today or tomorrow. Grab that as well and start playing around with this and giving us feedback on the .NET slash SDK repo. And so that we can incorporate that feedback into Preview 5 and Preview 6 all the way through to .NET 10. There it is, run file. Thanks very much.